this is Professor Farhat, in which I'm going to take a look at this CPA exam questions that was sent by one of my subscribers, and she she's, she wanted me to share uh, my wisdom, basically, with that question. I believe the question is very interesting because it covers uh, the terminology of the bond, so it's very important to understand the terminology. So this is, once you understand the terminology, you will see that this problem is not as bad, but it's a little bit tricky. So let's go ahead and take a look on the take a look at this problem and there are more than one way to solve this problem i'm going to show you the shortcut and the long way and the medium way so i'm going to show you a few few ways to solve this problem because the reason i'm going to show you more than one way because when you want when you go into the exam you want to understand all three ways so you want to understand this bond terminology very much okay on january 2nd vol issued bonds with a face value of 480,000 at a discount to yield 10%. So this is what we know from this statement. From this statement, we did the following. The company debited cash, credited bonds payable, bonds payable, 480,000. Now we don't know the cash amount. We're not giving this information. And we know it's a discount. Therefore, we debited a discount. Okay, that's all what we know from this information. That's all what we know. Obviously, the cash amount has to be less than 480 because it was a discount bond. Hopefully, you know this much. The bonds pay interest semi-annually. That's helpful. On June 30th, which is after six months, the company paid interest of 14,400. Excellent. So what did we do on, this was January 1st, this was, I'm sorry, January 2nd, June 30th, June 30th, I paid interest of 14,400. They told me here, I paid interest. Therefore, I credited cash, 14,400. Well, if I paid interest, I'm gonna have to debit interest expense. I don't know, I'm not told interest expense, but I'm told after vol recorded amortization of the bond discount of 3,600, the bond has a carrying amount of 363,600. So I'm told here that I discount, I, I amortized, I amortized 3,600. So this was the, I credited the discount, 3,600. Well, now I know my interest expense is those two together, which is the amount of cash I paid plus the, amort plus the amount I'm amortizing as a discount. Now, if you don't understand what a discount is, Please, that's where Farhat Lectures will come into place and help you understand that a discount is basically, it's a prepaid interest, but you don't recognize it until times goes by. So times go, going by, now you recognize it as interest expense. So you paid 14400 in cash, you amortized 3600 in discount on bonds, therefore your interest expense is 18000 So I'm doing this as I'm going through this problem, okay? And we know that the carrying value of the amount after the first payment is 363,600. What amount, what amount did Vol receive upon issuing of the bond? So the question is this one here, what amount did they receive when they issued the bond? Now, uh, first, first of all, once you understand it's a discount bond, once you understand it's a face value of 480, the face value of 480, it means it was issued less than 480. So immediately, I could eliminate D. It cannot be issued at 480 because they told me in the problem it's issued at a discount. I could eliminate C because C is... Sorry, I cannot eliminate C. I'm going to have to keep C. Uh, I'm going to have to keep the rest um, for now. I'm going to have to keep the rest, okay? Because they're all below 180, okay? Now, how can I find out what was the issue price? Well... <laughs> Well, I'm gonna, well let, let me show you the long way, then, then, the sh then, the, then the short way. The long way and the short way. Okay, so the long way is, if I came up with interest expense of 18,000, this is like the long way, well, how do I compute interest expense? Because I'm giving this information, I'm giving this information, therefore I figure out interest expense. Interest expense is the bond carrying value at the beginning of the period times the, times the uh, discount rate or the interest rate or the market rate well i don't know what i started with i don't know the book value of the bond at the beginning of the period but the book value of the bond at the beginning of the period should equal to the cash because it's a brand new bond so we did not we don't have any discount to deduct from the face value okay remember the book value is the same as the cash as of january 2nd okay because the book value equal to the bonds payable 
480 minus any unamortized discount, minus the discount. So the book value as of January 2nd is the cash amount. That's why I can use the cash amount. Therefore, I'm going to take the book value, which is equal to the cash amount and this circumstances times 10% divided by two. Why 10% divided by two? Because my market ongoing rate is 10%. It's semi-annually divided by two is 5%. Therefore, I'm going to take my cash amount, which is, that's what I'm looking for, times 10% divided by two. I'm going to make this 5%, which is the interest semi-annually, gave me 18,000 of interest. Gave me 18,000 in interest. All what I have to do now is take, take to find the cash amount, to find the cash amount, I'm going to take uh, 18,000 and divide it by 0.05. And my cash amount is 360. Therefore, if I solve this formula, my cash amount equal to 360. And that's my answer. That's my cash answer, which is 360,000. Okay. Now I know the discount. The discount must have been 120. So you could be, you could be asked about the discount. So that's why I, I solved this problem. Show you all the bits and pieces. It's like a puzzle. This problem. That's why I like it. It's like a puzzle, and that's why I want not only share it with the students. I want to share it with everyone because it's it's a puzzle, and hopefully. You are following. Now, this is the long way. Yeah? On the exam, you don't want to do this. On the exam, you really want to understand how bonds work. And if you don't, for hat lectures, look right here, right, right, right on the in the screen, right here. Go to my website for hat lectures. And here's what you do. You are told after the first payment, here's the key. Here's the piece of information that you are giving. You are told after the first payment. The book value is 363. Well, what happened to a bond if it's a discount bond, which is we are told it's a discount bond? Well, if it's a discount bond, if the face value, we are told the face value is 480. Therefore, when when, 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 when it was issued, it was issued below the face value. And whatever amount it was issued for, well, if we know we discounted, which is also given to you, 3,600, so you're going to take the amount that was issued for plus 3,600, and that's going to bring you to 363. Guess what? Well, it means it was issued. It, if I have to go backward, it means it was issued. It was issued at 360,000 because 360, if I'm if I amortized 3,600 as I'm told in the problem, the new book value becomes 363,600. Now the next. Next time I pay interest, I'm going to amortize more discount. It will go up and the bond will keep on going up until it reaches 480,000. So this is the shortcut. This is the shortcut right here. It was issued below 480. I added to it 3,600. It became 363. I'm given all this information. So how much was it issued for 360? Again, in this problem, I could have asked you, um, what's, the, what's what was the interest expense, for example? You know, what was the interest expense? Well, you will take how much I amortized plus plus how much I paid. Um, I can ask you find the total discount. What was the total discount for the bond, which is kind of kind of going this way too. You can find the total discount of the bond. So that you could be asked many problems. That's that's why that's that's the difficulty in bonds. You really have to understand bonds. That's the difficulty in bonds. Why? Because you have the look, look how many pieces are we working with here? How many pieces? You are working with the carrying value. And the carrying value could be for a premium bond, could be for a discount bond. So that's those are two difficulties. You have to understand what the face value is. You have to understand what discount yield is. You have to understand how to compute the cash paid for bond interest expense. You have to understand the amortization, whether it's a bond discount or a bond premium. So there are many moving pieces. Once you understand them, they make sense. But if you don't have a good grip on them, they're going to overwhelm you. At the end of this recording, I'm going to I'm going to remind you to, about farhatlectures.com. Please check it out. And if not for anything, check out my website to find out how well or not well your university is doing on the CPA exam. That's a good indication. How well is your accounting program, in my opinion, at least. And look, I don't replace your Wiley, Roger, Becker, Glime, or any other course. All what I can do is I explain the material a little bit better for you. Study hard, good luck, and most importantly, stay safe.